Hello all, this is Queenie Leem and welcome back to my channel. This video marks my two week update. In this video, I'm not only gonna do my two week update, but I'm also going to answer all of the questions that you put on my Instagram and on the comments in my YouTube section. Um, there have been a lot of really good questions. Some have been repetitive, so I wanted to make sure that I answered those as soon as possible. So watch to the end and hopefully I'll get to your question. So some of the questions that you guys asked me about um, include the following topics. My reties, if I'm concerned about thinning in the front of my hair, why I decided to start microlocks, me becoming a loctician, how I prepped my hair before I installed my style. Okay, so to start, I'm gonna do a 360 for everyone. It looks something like this. They're still coily, but some of them have actually closed up. Let me see if I can find one. They're usually on this side. I think it's because I play with my hair. They've been closing up quicker over here. Let's see if I can find. It's not completely closed, but it's like a butt on the end. Let's see, there's definitely one in here. For the update of what's going on with my hair, some things I've noticed. Up here, so this is a lock right here. But it's so short that it just it curls right back up so you can't see it. Come on. Yeah, so this is, this one actually came out and then I braided it. So this one isn't actually in the interlock, the interlock fashion because it's so small, but I'll start interlocking on the way up. And I think that this is a brand new one. I don't think that this, I had this one in a lock at all because it seems too short. So eventually this will become a lock, this little teeny tiny one right up here. So I haven't washed my hair since the day that I installed. So it's been since January 21st. So it's been exactly two weeks since I washed my hair last. I haven't been running as much as I had been. So I don't feel like I need to wash my hair right now. There hasn't been much buildup. Don't even notice anything. I don't see any lint. So I think I'm going to wash my hair either tomorrow morning or I'm going to wait till Saturday so I can let it dry all day without taking it out of my, my braids. So that's my plan with that. So let's jump right in to those Q&A questions. I'm really excited to answer all of those. Oh, but before I do, disclaimer, I am not a loctician. I am not licensed to install locks or do anyone else's hair. I am just a person who really, really wanted sister locks and decided to figure out if I could do something that would satisfy my need for sister locks on my own. So I'm sharing my journey with you because I realized that people might want to know what I did with my hair because I don't really see people with hair like this ever. It's very rare that I see anyone with sister locks. So when I did see one person with sister locks, I've seen one person with sister locks that I noticed since I started to know what sister locks was, which was this fall. And you know, I asked her all about it and she, she probably thought I was a crazy person. So I was like, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, please, please, she thought I was asking for money. I swear to God, she was like, uh, yes. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask you a question. Do, are those sister locks? And she goes, oh, honey, yes. Yes, they're sister locks. And I asked her all these questions, but you know, I realized that there are probably people out there like me who are interested in this style and are having a hard time finding the information about it. So that is why I'm doing this. My mission with this YouTube channel is to really help other people find this style, to make it more accessible to people, and to maybe one day make this style just as common as a relaxer or a weave. Okay, let's get to your question. 
So I'm going to start this with some background. So background, my name is Elizabeth. I live in New York City and I'm 26 years old. I'm African American and I installed my own micro locks on my head by myself. My husband did help me, but I installed them on my own. I didn't go to a loctician or anyone certified to install this style on my head. I installed this style using the interlock method. If you have any questions about that, go to my first YouTube video and you can watch it. When I started interlocking my hair, my hair was between 16 to 20 inches. We can just say 18 in general for the purposes of this video because I will include the pricing of sister locks for my length hair in New York City. It took me eight weeks to install this style on my head, on and off. My lock count is 668 locks, and my lock anniversary, or my lockversary date, is January 21st, 2020. Okay, so that's the background, I promise. So now we're gonna jump into your questions. So the first question is from Z Finest 496 and she asks, are you going to count your lock journey from the beginning date or the last lock completed? I count my lock, my lock anniversary as the date that I completed my very last lock. So if you look at um, part seven of my install series, that was shot on January 21st, 2020. Second question is by Jadikins. So if you were tired if, of the style, would you shave it or take them all out? over a long time. So I would definitely shave, I would shave it off. I would just cut it, there is no, you might see in my other videos, I've, I've explained this, that it took me 15 minutes when I started, it took me 15 minutes to install a single lock and it would take me about three times as long to take out a lock. So that'd be 45 minutes <laughs> per lock and I have 668. It would take me the better, like probably half a year to take them out. And there are some people who have taken out their sister locks and it takes them about that long. It's a long process, so no, I would definitely shave my head off, but I don't see any reason why I would ever cut this off because I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Alexis MH asks, so is this permanent or can I do this as a protective style and still have my hair taken out? Okay, no. I'm gonna say no. I don't think that this is a good style to go into knowing that you wanna take them out. Don't do that to yourselves because um, it will take a long time to take them out. JK asks, I'm in the process of installing my sister's micro locks and would like to know where you got your measuring tool from or did you create it yourself? The answer is I made my own DIY measuring tool and I will give you a video on how I made that. So it might be up shortly, might be a little bit. It's not gonna be a super long video. It's super easy to make. It's super easy to make. I'm really excited to show you how I made it. Okay, next question. So Kia Thomas, can you share how you prepped your hair? What did you wash with? Did you let it air dry? Okay, so how I prep my hair, this is a really good question. And I don't know if I wanna tell you the truth, but I will tell you the truth. The first time that I tried to put in those pre-sectioned mini braids, um, I already had mini braids on my head, so I was taking out a couple and then trying to make a straight line and then putting them back in, and that was driving me insane. I tried to do that for the first two weeks and I was going loopy. So I did that and then I took them all out and then I separated my hair and I did my first version of my pre-section mini braids. And then I started installing one of the sections. But then as I was installing the sections, I realized, oh my gosh, if I keep doing them this size, this small, it's gonna end up being over 700, around 800 locks, and I can't do that. You'll notice that they're narrower in the back. So then it clicked, I'm like, oh, wait a second. What I need to do is, if I have 16 in the front that are a certain size, then I'm gonna need to have 16 in the back that are however much bigger. Actually, after doing that first grade, I'm really glad I did that first grade because it helped me understand how I was going to change into my second grid and how I prepped my hair for that second grid was I flat ironed it. Yep, I, I flat ironed my hair. So I flat ironed my hair because when I parted my hair, my hair was breaking, my ends were getting stuck, my hair was so thick that it was difficult. Um, I, was, I was scraping the comb across my head and I didn't want to do that anymore. And I know that you're supposed to, when you install interlocks, you're supposed to like have your hair be pristine, absolutely clean. Uh, you're not supposed to have it, no braids, you're not supposed to have blow dried it, you're supposed to have it washed and then air dried and then detangled, okay? But that's not what I did. I'm not saying that you should flat iron your hair first, but that's what I did. Because in doing that made it so that my second grid was so much more precise. 
so much more precise and I'm really glad that I did it. Yep. And that's also why I did the apple cider vinegar rinse after my entire install because I knew that on top of all the shampoo that I had in my hair from washing my mini braids, I also had coconut oil from when I flat ironed my hair. So that's how I prepped it. I wouldn't say that you necessarily should if your hair is a little bit shorter and you find it easier to detangle and your ends aren't getting all caught together and stuff, then totally just don't just omit the flat iron. I, I would not recommend it, but I did it. Okay, next question. Alchemist Tribe asks, my question is, do you think it's better to start with a natural hair stretched blown out with a blow dryer or a flat iron? I would not recommend anyone flat ironing their hair, but before they do their install, but I did. I would recommend doing what you see on the micro lacquer's websites. Like um, if you get it done by a professional, they say come in with your hair stretched and dried, not braided, but combed out and detangled. That's my recommendation, but it's not what I did. Kalasha Smith asks, or Kalash, Kalasha? Have I said that wrong? Kalasha Smith? Okay. Kalasha Smith asks, wow, would you install these on someone else's head? No. I'm, I'm not doing this style to make money. I'm doing this style for myself and I'm sharing it with you guys because I think that's what's good and right. Okay, so this question is about my hair thinning. Priya A asks, how do you plan on avoiding thinning? All right, so this is my whole thing about thinning. Tension alopecia plagues, plagues us as African American women. It does. And it happens with a lot of styles. And the reason that's happening is because people are either, two things that are happening. You're either having a lot of tension on your edges, like pulling it up into a style, or you have a style that has a lot of added hair on it. Because your follicle is made to support the weight of the hair that grows out of it. It is not made to support the hair of, you know, the hair you get from another person's head. It's not made to support the weight of plastic, which is what synthetic hair is. So I'm really, I'm honestly not worried about the thinning, thinning at the front um, because as you see, like it's already grown out. I don't do them very tight. Um, I try to make sure that, this is another reason why I started doing my own hair because I didn't like that when people did my, my hair, like I would come home and that night I would see follicles popping out or be red and really, really tight because that's exactly how you get tension alopecia. And tension alopecia is, it's irreversible because you were ca causing a scar in the follicle and the hair will no longer grow. Okay, there we go. So I'm not worried about it thinning. I already had some thinning from other styles. I got thinning when I had my weaves because my weaves would center right here. The tension was mostly here. So as you see, there was some thinning, but I think I stopped the weaves early enough that it didn't, it didn't lead to that. Also, yeah, there's no added hair. This is just my hair. Yeah, that's the answer. I don't think that I, that I should be worried about thinning with the style. I will not do my hair too tight and I'm not adding any extra hair. So hopefully that is not, that's not a big problem. Okay. So here's some miscellaneous, but really, really good questions that I really wanted to answer for you. So let's get to it. N2 exercise asks, if you don't mind me asking, had you gotten quotes from certified locticians prior to you opting to do it yourself? If so, how much did they quote you? Okay, so I actually did calculate um, a couple things. So no, I didn't go to a loctician to get my hair installed in Sister Lux because I looked up their, their, the pricing online, I knew how long my hair was and that was not an option for me. I can't do that. That's a lot of money to me. So here are the two prices. So I'll give you two people. Well, one is a person who's listed on the, on the Sister Lux website and then another is like, a salon that does them. So the first person says that a consultation is $35. The installation would be $1,600 for the first four inches. And then it's an additional $50 per inch up to seven inches. And then after seven inches, it's an additional $100 per inch. So if my hair is between 16 to 20 inches, let's just say 18 on average, that means that including the consultation, the price would be $1,885 if my hair were only 18 inches and they didn't upcharge me for my thickness. And if they charged me for 20 inches, it would be $2,085. Yep. Okay, let's do that the second theoretical consultation that I didn't go to, but had considered going to this place. So the next one is $35 for a consultation. It's four, for four inches of hair, it's a $1,500 um, 
that's the price tag, $1,500. And then it's $50 for each additional inch after that. Um, so if I have 18 inches on average, that's $2,235 for my hair. And if, I, if they had quoted me at 20 inches, it would have been $2,335. Look, I'm not gonna. I'm not doing this to slag off sister locks, and what they, I think that they're amazing. And obviously, I did this to my hair. And I think what the sister lock consultant offers you is you need to pay them for their for their services. Like they're doing an an insane amount of work for you, and they have so much detail. You should pay them. But in the chance that you don't have that money, and you're willing to invest something other than money, i.e. 48 weeks of your time. You're at my channel. Thank you for coming. Just so that you know what what I was balancing. What I was balancing. It is, you know, around $2,000 or eight weeks of time. $2,000, eight weeks of my time. Okay, next question. Let's see what we got here. Shamise asks, do we currently have a video, oh, okay. Do we currently have a video schedule or are the videos just coming whenever you're finished with them? Okay, so I don't wanna give you guys a video schedule yet. I will eventually, but right now, I'm so focused on school. I'm so focused on school. I, I have this goal that I really wanna achieve and that has to take my priority. But once I know what's going on with that, then I'll have a more regular schedule. So there you go. Oh yeah, so I would rather you guys have low expectations and then I exceed your expectations than have high expectations and I fall short. So that is why I'm not gonna give you a schedule yet, but I'm gonna do my best. Ooh, this is not a dumb question, GS po GSW Power. This is not a dumb question. I love this question. I asked this question many times before. Okay, okay, so GS Power asks, this may sound like a dumb question, but can you get braids such as box braids and stuff like that with this? I want to. One of my backup things was that if this style looked fuzzy or crazy, like in that in-between stage, then I was going to do box braids over top of it. That was my plan. Um, I have seen that people have put extensions like in a braid style over top of their sister locks, but I don't want to do those now because as those other questions, I would be concerned about thinning in the front. I really would, unless I did them super loose and then it might look kind of weird with my grid, but I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't be noticeable. I think maybe when my hair is matured more, then I will consider um, putting a uh, maybe trying, you know, like a box braided style on top of it. I, I, so I think the answer is yes, I think it's possible, but I don't know if you would want to do it immediately after your install, or if I would do it immediately after my install. So I hope I answered your question. So a lot of people are asking me questions on the, on my natural hair box braids, and you know, I can make a whole video about how I use like human hair box braids to grow out my natural hair. If you guys are actually interested in that and actually want a full length video on it, let me know and I'll put it on my list of things to make. Um, I got, there's like a whole bunch of stuff about it. I, there are like things I would tell you not to do, don't make these mistakes, i.e. gluing your own hair. Um, and then there are other things I would include like the types of hair and where I found them and if it's always available because I found them on eBay. So there's some information I found the hair on eBay um, and it's not always available. So yeah, let me know if you guys would like a video about that. Whitney MJ, hey Whitney MJ. So do you have a video where you share why you decided to start this sister lock journey? I see, well these aren't sister locks, these are micro locks, but I see. I got you, it's fine. Um, I see that you work out a lot, but just interested to see what other factors played into your final decision. Um, oh man, why I started my, I made a list because you know, maybe before when I explained it, it wasn't, it, it's a lot of reasons, but the, here are some of the reasons, okay. The main reason was that I was looking for a style that I could go into grad school with that was both professional and low maintenance because my natural hair is anything but low maintenance and I feel that when my hair is in a bun it doesn't look professional because I have all these fuzzies and I have a lot of breakage and it's always fuzzy and I don't want to both damage my hair more to make it look more professional and I wanted to look professional and I also wanted to be me and I wanted to be something that was easy to style. My hair is not what I would call durable. I would call it really delicate. My hair has a lot of breakage. I have a very thin cuticle. My hair gets really, really dry. Even though I would say I have an oily scalp, because my coil is so tight, that oil on my scalp never makes it down to my hair. So my hair is super dry. 
and it's it's just always dry it's always dry even when I put a whole bunch of coconut oil on it the next day it seems like like super dry yeah and if you didn't see my other video go check it out I think it's video number four um, I have 4B 4C hair I have shrinkage around 75 to 85 percent my hair gets damaged by the Sun so I have some Sun damage is what you would call it and I'm photo bleaching of my hair um, my hair dreads easily so all those things lead to like breaking easily so that's one reason why I decided to lock my hair okay so for me because of my hair type, I just felt like wash and goes were unsustainable because every time I take it out of a wash and go, it would break so much hair off. It would take so long. I'd be in the bathtub for probably two to three hours just trying to detangle my hair from my wash and go. Not sustainable. Okay? I didn't want to do relaxers anymore because there was a point at which the reason why I stopped was that I had had relaxers for like two years and I felt like my hair was starting to thin. I'm like, wait a second. I know I have thick hair. So I didn't want to do a relaxer anymore because I felt like it was damaging my hair and I didn't want to put myself around carcinogenic um, chemicals anymore. So that was my decision. I don't slag anyone that has a relaxer. Some people look fly with a relaxer, but I didn't want to do that to myself. Let's see. Box braids. I had box braids for a while. I liked box braids. I thought box braids were going to be the only style I would ever have again. But then you know, I took my hair out and I had mini braids. So the mini braids had the same exact grid as my box braids. I just took the added hair out. And my hair was so lightweight. I was like, oh man, you mean I don't have to, my neck didn't hurt. When I was running, I didn't have all that extra weight. So that's what I was like, hmm, maybe I need to find a style where I don't have added hair. So I did do human hair braids, but like I said, it's still added hair, it's added weight. And even when I took my hair out of those human hair box braids, anytime I took my human hair box braids out of the front, so much, I would, I would lose so much hair that was stuck in the buildup, if that makes sense. And I'm excited about this style because now any shed hair goes into the lock. So I'm hoping that these will, these will thicken up um, because there's gonna be less Less manipulation of the front of my hair than there was in box braids. Then weaves, I, weaves also still puts tension on my scalp and because I have an oily scalp, I would get so much buildup after working out or just after a couple weeks um, because there wasn't my hair, my scalp wasn't breathing. So I didn't wanna do weaves anymore. And then also my hair is the color of a 430. In this video, you might not be able to see it, but in natural light and in some of my other, there's one post where you get to see the color of my hair where I'm showing you the ends. My hair is so, it's such a weird color that I can't find a weave that matches it. And then when you try to dye it, there's no way you'll ever match it perfectly. So to me, a weave just didn't look believably like my hair. So I didn't want to do weaves. So when I finally did those mini braids after I took out the added hair of my human hair box braids, I, I loved them. But then my ends started to what I, my ends started to lock, my ends started to dread, and I didn't want that to be a permanent style. I had planned on having that as a style where I, I had my hair in for like a, a month, and I took my hair out, you know, and then I would braid it back up. And what I also found was uh, because my ends were locking, as I detangled my ends, I was losing so much hair, and I was like, wait, this is supposed to be a low manip low manipulation, low maintenance style for me, but it's not. I'm. I'm still manipulating my hair. I'm still causing a lot of breakage. I got really sad about it for about two weeks because I had been so like hopeful about the mini braid style for myself. I was really excited about it. And then I was like, well, this, guess I'm just gonna have to go back to box braids. And then I, I think because someone probably tagged mini braids, at, like a post with both mini braids and, and micro locks or sister locks, I found dark and lovely. And then I realized that all hope was not lost. And now here we are. So I got into sister locks um, and micro locks through my experiments with my mini braids. So there are a lot of different reasons why I decided that this is the perfect style for me. And right now, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is the perfect style for me. But this has also become so much more than just a style for me. Now I have a mission. My mission, as I said, I think earlier in this video, my mission is to make this style as common as a relaxer or a weave because I think it's a great alternative. So this is my last question from you guys. So her name is, it's T Daddy. Um, so T Daddy says, what would you say was the absolute hard, hardest part of this process? And would you do it again? The absolute hardest part of this process. That's a good question. So 
It was definitely hard installing my hair. That was difficult. But I want to say it's the hardest part. The hardest part was getting the grid down initially. And I think a lot of people have also echoed that in my, in my comments section and also in my DMs that that is the hardest part, getting that grid. And they, they like gave up. I almost gave up. I almost went to a loctician and was like, hey, can you just make my braids exactly like this? But you know, I feel like if they knew what my, my goal was, that they weren't going to help me in the right way because they'd be like, just let me install them on your, your head. Like, you're not gonna do this yourself. So yeah, it's the grid method. And that's why I really wanna make a video that's just about how I did the grid. And would I do it again? I would 100% do it again. I would do it again. I wish I had done it when I was born. I wish my parents had done this to my hair when I was born. I would do it again for sure. Okay. So that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you know where to put those. Put those in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure to like the video below. Um, if you want to see how I installed my hair, you can check out part one through seven of my DIY microlabs installation series. And also, if you want to continue following my journey, and yes, there will be more videos, um, make sure to subscribe below so that you can see uh, the video as soon as it's uploaded. Right now, I don't know when those are going to be uploaded. They will be uploaded shortly, but just so that you are able to know as soon as they come up, subscribe. So thank you so much.